real fast, I wanted to open up this time for, for questions. So I know that there's a few different questions that have been asked in the Q&A, and um, there might have been questions in the Slack. So I'm just going to look at those real fast and see if I can answer. If you do have any questions, please submit to the Q&A portion of, of, um, of the Zoom, if you're inside the Zoom. If not, you can do it in the Rapids Academy Slack, and I'll just try to go through these and answer them as best I can. So, um, okay, so someone's asking basically, how, how, how well does this work on AWS, GCP, or Azure? What instance types do we recommend? And how do the benchmarks compare? Yeah, so, AWS, GCP, Azure, all of them have great, have great instance types. From a price performance perspective, we, we really like any instance type that has a T4 GPU. So they're definitely the, the cheaper GPUs on AWS. They're called the G4 instances. They're about 52 cents an hour uh, on demand pricing. That's basically, that's what you get access to whenever you're on app.blazingsql.com. And it's incredibly price performant. You know, like you just saw we were running 15 30 second queries on 100 gigabytes um, with that 52 cent an hour. If we scaled it up, you know, and ran it on 16 of those T4s, we can start doing terabyte scale queries really quite quickly. Um, so, so we highly recommend those. But there are other instance types on AWS that, such as the P3 instances um, that have V100s, and those are also great. You do get a performance boost. From, from V100 processor or GPUs over, over T4 GPUs, we're just not certain that the price differential is all that, all that meaningful. Um, for GCP, they also have T4 instances. I believe Azure doesn't have T4 instances, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I think they're all V100s or P100 instances. So there's a little bit of a trade-off there when it comes to pricing. GCP's T4 instance is about a dollar an hour. So you know, that's also things to take into consideration. But those are, those are the, the server types that we, that we like a lot. And like I was mentioning, the T4s are a little bit slower. You might get, you know, 30% drop in, in performance, but you're paying maybe, you know, a fourth to an eighth, depending on where you're, where you're getting that GPU. Um, let me see now in the Rapids Academy um, if there are any, any other questions. All right, do you plan to support Hive? Yeah, actually, so here, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna share my screen. That's a, that's a great question. So the answer to that question is yes, we do uh, support Hive. So at docs.blazingdb.com, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. Um, we actually do do support Hive. And so we basically integrated, um, the, the package PyHive. Um, and what you can do is you can pass a Hive cursor. So if you connect to a Hive, uh, if you connect to a Hive server uh, with, other, with all the parameters that you necessarily need, you can pass that cursor as a table to Blazing SQL. And now we can be running those, those queries off of those tables. And we're able to utilize a lot of the metadata in Hive to do predicate pushdown to those data sources. So we can run queries off of Hive tables. This is our first kind of, so when you think about Blazing SQL, the way that we think about it is there's SQL queries that happen either on files or in memory formats. Those in memory formats ultimately have to become, you know, CUDA, CUDFs, and those on file formats, you know, can be whatever it is that we support, like Apache Parquet, text files, et cetera. Um, but our belief is to start creating extensions to different data set, uh, databases, DBMSs, et cetera, so that you can be running Blazing SQL queries off of those. And really, we just use them as a predicate pushdown layer to you know, pull out just the partitions of data that we care about and, and run the queries. So in this particular example, this is how we do that for, with Hive. Um, and that's how you're able to connect Hive. So that's a great question. And the short answer is yes, we, we do support Hive. All right, let me see if there are any other questions. Um, Okay, so is a blazing is a blazing SQL join faster than QDF dot join? Um, so the answer is it depends. It, it depends on if your if your query has you know where clauses where where predicate pushdown could necessarily be uh, helpful. There's a PR that's currently in development 
um, which is an inequality joins. And once that PR is actually done inside LiveQDF, what that means is that Blazing SQL will start utilizing our predicate pushdown on join clauses as well. And so if we see that partitions don't necessarily have overlap in terms of their maxes and mins, for example, then we're not going to even try to do a join against those different partitions. So if that, in that particular instance, we wouldn't necessarily be faster. Otherwise, we're, base, we're just using the same exact primitives. So the, the performance is basically the same exact thing. Um, um, how much Hive metadata is supported, e.g. Hive partition bucketing? So someone's asking right now, um, after the Hive question, you know, how much Hive metadata is supported? I don't know the, the answer to that particular question. Um, we, we've had, I mean, we, we have pretty demanding workloads that we're running those Hive, that, that, that Hive requirement came from a, from a customer, uh, a customer request. And if I'm not mistaken, they, they do something on like, something on the order of like a million org partitions. Um, I don't know what that translates to in terms of how much metadata that necessarily, that necessarily uh, entails. Um, so yeah, I, I wouldn't necessarily be able to, to answer that question too well. I'm, I'm sorry. Um, okay, so I use HPC clusters of, at work. Does Dask Slurm cluster carry over to Blazing in terms of support? Um, so if you're, if you're managing Dask with Slurm, like that's, that's totally whatever, like whatever you wanna do with Dask, that's fine. As long as you pass basically the Dask client to the Blazing context, Right. However, Dask is managing itself and what Dask is doing, we're, we don't necessarily care, right? We just run our, we just utilize all that Dask, all the information from Dask and the scheduler and the workers to basically know where to point our Blazing SQL workers. And Dask is literally the thing. So when a query comes in, Dask is actually executing a dot run query function that we have inside of our Python library um, that then is launching that partition of a query across those different workers. So you can utilize Dask however it is with Kubernetes, with Slurm, et cetera, whatever it is that you, that you really want to use it with. Um, and you just pass that Dask client to Blazing SQL, and then we can, you know, we can operate our query across that cluster. OK, um, I'm going to answer two more questions because we're kind of running out of time for the webinar portion. Um, so out of core process is out of core processing enabled by default and new release or require any specific setup? No, it's, it's, it's there by default. So you don't have to set anything for, for out of core processing. Obviously the more system resources that you have, the bigger and badder your queries can get. So if you have a bunch of disk space and a bunch of system memory, you can run, you know, really quite large queries on it. Um, and, and, and it'll just work. So it's totally, it's in the nightly build. It's in the stable build. You don't have to do anything. If you're installing 0 0.14 or above, you're good to go. Okay. Uh, and another question is, do we plan to add support for ClickHouse as a data storage layer or plugin? Yeah, so our, we're agnostic to, to where, where the storage plugins come from and what they necessarily are. From our perspective, if someone, one, wants to build out the functionality to add ClickHouse, that's great. We don't have it currently on our roadmap. It's just not a request that we've gotten from any customers. Um, but it's definitely a feature I would love to see inside the engine. So one, if you really care about that, put an issue, you know, submit an issue into GitHub Blazing DB slash Blazing SQL project. The Blazing SQL project, we take external, you know, issues from, like, it's a feature request. So just submit that to us and, you know, we can prioritize that in our open source. Um, and, you know, if a customer is actually requesting it with a budget to bag it up, then we can actually prioritize it and get it done sooner. Um, but yeah, that's a, that's a great question. And yeah, we would love to, we would love to have it is the, is the short answer to that. Um, okay. I think those are all the questions. So we're going to take a quick break. Um, for, well, one is if you did the, if you're only here for, for the webinar and not for the instructor led lab. Um, so that's mainly everyone that's on YouTube right now. Uh, thank you so, for, so much for joining. Uh, I'm going to pull up my screen again, just one more time to make sure that, you know, we're sharing any information. Um, please follow us on Twitter at blazing SQL. You can also follow rapids Academy, which is at Academy rapids. Um, 
And, and you know, we're going to have a lot more of these webinars talking about a bunch of different things. This is really a high level webinar. Um, we can get much more into the weeds during one, the labs, but two, over the next few weeks and months, we'll be doing a lot more content. Hopefully we'll be bringing industry insiders that can talk about how they utilize it inside their organization. Um, you can also reach out to me if you have any questions at rodrigo at blazing um, Also join our Slack. The Slack is great. It's the Rapids Go AI Slack. You're able to join it. Um, we sent out a Slack invite in your emails to, to everyone who signed up, but if you don't have it, just go to rapids.ai and go to the community page and you'll see it down at the bottom. Um, and yeah, like I said, we're going to have another talk August 11th at 11 a.m. And it's going to be about multi-GPU and leveraging Dask by the crew at Coiled Computing. So it should be an incredibly exciting talk. And we super duper appreciate it.